so that they won't have to change. We can still lock them in um, under false pretenses. But anyway, they were trying to get lots of NGOs to send letters of support for OXML uh, to get it accepted. And what they did was Microsoft wrote these letters, template letters, and said, fill in your, in your, uh, got your um, charity name and personalize it a little bit. And many of them didn't. They sent in just the default, and a lot of it was insert company name here and things like that. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I've actually... oh, sorry, sorry Roy, carry on. Okay. Uh, the, companies that, the countries I know about where this happened uh, and was confirmed was, first of all, Denmark had uh, 37 letters with identical words being sent by Microsoft partners and all kinds of allies around the countries, and some of them forgot to change the type company name here. So you can actually see it in the letter, type company letter here. And and that's kind of a typical thing. Now in Singapore, they had a similar story after the one which was reported in Denmark. And in Singapore, you had submissions from like girls' schools and things about like OOX, OOXML, and just it's completely ridiculous. Like they went as far as just using all kinds of zombie submissions and things like that, from all kinds of things that have nothing to do with it. And also from based on templates. Uh, and, and not so long ago, there was the debate of net neutrality, and you have all kinds of debates like that when you have to make submissions. And, and one person, I think, who was a former employee or something of a company, a telecom company or something, he also forgot to change the templates. And once he got caught, he got under a lot of, you know, he wasn't a normal person, he was a person who was supposed to be more respected. And he was saying, well, this is how I write letters. I first put, like, like you know... Uh, uh, my name he puts is a is a kind of a bracketed thing and says well put your name here and he was just trying to get out of it and he says well, no 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 that's that's the way I write letters uh, and obviously that's that's kind of damage control and it's a typical thing I think many many companies do even the open source and free software people try to encourage people to work by you know write about this and write about that but. When a proprietary company or when a company that does malicious things for its own interest starts to send this to uh, people who are obviously being paid or have vested interest in just pushing these other companies' uh, agenda and the company feeds them these letters, basically saying, well, we need some drones to mail these letters and it gives them this thing, put your company here and send it there and gives instructions. Uh, so that we can all kind of get rich and, you know, you get your gold partnership or elevated status and all kinds of benefits. That's yeah. wrong, because that means they buy the votes. Yeah, and on the sort of fun side of that, you can say that if you deny the dead rights to vote, then there's something wrong with this system. When dead people are not allowed to, to write in and, and, uh, and voice their concerns uh, about a particular uh, company's uh, agenda, they should be allowed to do that, damn it. Uh, <laughs> so I know, other, I know companies... When like different governments have been making tentative switches uh, away from Microsoft, um, all of a sudden they get deluged with regular Joes, and some of them turn out to have been dead. Uh, you know. Uh, well, I've, I've actually found, um, like I said, I, I will put this in the show notes, but I've actually found the uh, article that I was talking about, the comments, and yes, I just thought I'd double-check what I was saying previously, but yeah, it does have in brackets um, after it's trying to insult, and it's funny enough, Roy, it's only applicable to me and you, because it was uh, a comment put uh, on the first show uh, comment section, um, and it was it trying to insult uh, insult the show and both of us, I think, um, but it's got in, in clear as day, cl- um, keyword here in brackets in the middle of a sentence, um, where obviously he hasn't deleted it uh, before they posted it, but I'll be putting that up in the show notes. So people can have a look and see what they think themselves to see if this is a, if they think this is a case of a generic uh, template which is just modified for every uh, blog that they uh, that they post on. Um, gentlemen, I think we're going to have to look at wrapping this one up very shortly. Um, it was unlucky because uh, we've spent so much time talking about the news that we haven't got onto the subject that we intended to talk about at the very beginning of the show. Um, which I suggest we should do for another episode. Um, I know before we go, Gordon um, would like to say a few bits and pieces, uh, and I've got to introduce the last uh, the track that's going to play out. So, Roy, Gordon, if you've got no objections, I'll go over to Gordon for his final closing words, and then I'll um, send the track out for the uh, end of the show. Gordon? 
Over to you. Um, yeah, um, yeah, that was a bit, bit short and sweet, a bit quick. But <laughs> right, okay. Um, I, as as Tim says, I have um, two uh, audio casts that I want to draw people's attention to. Um, now I'm assuming quite a lot of the Tech Bytes um, re- uh, listeners. I'm assuming that they have, they are readers, or they have an interest in. Uh, IT policy and, and, and politics, socially aware, um, you know, things round about laws and rights and things like that. So if that's the case, if that's you, um, then there's two pod, two audio casts that you might find interesting and the links to both will be in the, will be in the show notes. The first one is that they're, they're both very US centric, uh, but they cover stuff that's important to all of us, essentially, uh, and both of them are fascinating. Um, first one is called the Tech Liberation, uh, I think it's Tech Liberation Front podcast. Um, they are based in, I don't know which university it is, I think they're based in Washington. Um, and they talk about things like net neutrality and um, they had a, an interesting episode uh, a couple of weeks ago about open and close, um, dealing with Apple, Google, Microsoft, and um, they, they essentially watch Washington as far as IT policies and digital rights and things like that. Uh, so they, they're fascinating. You should check, the, check them out. Um, the other one is dancarlin.com. Um, it's Common Sense by Dan Carlin. Uh, and Dan Carlin has no relation, I, I don't think he's any relation to the late um, George Carlin, uh, who's a brilliant, brilliant comedian. Um, but Dan Carlin is, he's like a radio, he sounds like a radio DJ um, doing, his, doing his thing. And he's more on the political side, common sense sort of political, right in the middle between the two parties, um, is... Very much, he'll give give blame where it's where it's needed. He'll give praise where it's needed. He'll actually assess policies and 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 things coming out of Washington in a sort of a different way. Um, and Jay is really engaging in the stuff that he brings up. Um, so that's it. That's the two. It's Common Sense uh, by Dan Carlin. Comes out every fortnight. So it's every two weeks. Uh, and Tech Liberation, which has been a bit slow at times, but round about every two weeks of, as well. So check both of those out if you have any interest in in that type of subject, which I'm assuming a lot of people who listen to this show have. Brilliant. Thank you, Gordon. And uh, Roy, uh, any last words before we uh, cut to the final music track? Probably uh, could do the patent thing next time. I think we're yeah. quite unsure about this show because we haven't talked about the news in a while. It's been, uh, I've just checked, it's been five days exactly since the previous show. Uh, I'm hoping uh, now that the injury of a person is out of the way, perhaps we can do a show in a couple of days and try to get back to the normal pace. And uh, hopefully the next show will be about patents. And we have lots to cover, especially uh, in Europe. Uh, I, I'll just say that the short story is that the uh, one attempt to legalize software patents in Europe was uh, derailed or basically fell through with Italy and Spain taking the lead in trying to take this thing down, but they already prepare for another way of trying to legalize them. Uh, so, yeah, that's... that's well, what, what I suggest, Roy, is for the um, next show, which hopefully, all being well, will be recorded uh, tomorrow, um, we'll, be, we'll cover exclusively the uh, the patents story and uh, look at more depth in that without being distracted from any sort of tidbits and news that we want to cover. I think I've certainly got uh, all the things covered that I saw over the last week, so uh, that'll probably be the next uh, next show that we look at more detail with that. Um, right. Uh, uh, I, I was Sorry, anticipating... <clears throat> Sorry, I, I was anticipating a little joke there. Any final words before we send the firing squad in? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're not that type of show. <laughs> Well, for episode 13, it hasn't been too unlucky. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to bring you the last tra- the track that we're going to play the uh, show out with. Um, this is by a person who I've got a lot of respect for, uh, John O'Bacon. It's his band, Severed Fifth. Um, and the track is Beating Hard, which is one of my personal favourites. Um, John has released two albums, um, and this is off his first album, and still remains uh, my favourite track of his, and probably one of my favourite sort of 
uh, death metal fusion type tracks. I apologise to a lot of readers, it's, uh, listeners, it's going to be uh, quite heavy for a lot of you and, and maybe not everybody's tastes, but I like it and I, I think it's very original and very creative. So have a listen, hope you enjoy it and you never know, you might start getting into heavy.